Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker. Today is Monday, July 27th, 2020, and I am back for another video. This is about the Erie, pre Griswold Erie number eight that was cracked, and I decided to go ahead and put it up for auction. I had a lot of interest in this skillet. Um, I have probably had more people watching it just so they could see what was going to happen. Honestly, I don't think many of them were serious buyers. Um, but this is a gorgeous skillet. Uh, the only problem with it is it has three hairline cracks. Two are by the handle. And I'm in my packing room, so the lighting isn't that great in here. But there's two here uh, by the handle, if you can see that. One, one. And then there's also one across the way. It's hard to find. It's very hairline. Oh, here it is right there. Right there there and uh, but other than that it's almost a near mint skillet it's it was made between 1886 and 1892 it is a series 2 it's got a um, moon crescent mark as a maker's mark at the 530 or you know 5 530 position it's a number 8 no model number there um, as none of the series 2 uh, skillets did there's actually 6 series of eerie skillets and then, of course, you have Erie at the top. And there was a lucky bidder on this. I don't know if uh, this individual is a watcher of my channel or not. But if they are, thank you so much for bidding on this. And they're going to get a really cool wall piece or something they can uh, use. Um, you know, like maybe baking, things like that. Um, you know, whatever they want to do with it. Um, I was even least able to get it to somebody that would appreciate it instead of leaving it out for the metal pickers. So just so you know, when I first, I'm going to show you how I pack this thing up. It's, you have to take extra care with it because it is, you know, I consider it more fragile because of the crack. So I will show you how I do it. Uh, when I sell a piece of cast iron, every piece of cast iron, gets use care and maintenance instructions and Brian who is a very loyal subscriber and a friend of mine we've done a, we've done a trade and he's purchased some cast iron from me will get these use care and maintenance tips I was able to retrieve it uh, as a copy off of a flash drive I backed up before my hard drive crashed last week so thank goodness for that every single order gets one of these and I also put the packing slip in with it and I'm going to hide it, you know, for privacy for the individual that purchased this. But they did bid on it. It actually sold for uh, sold for $33 plus shipping. So it was that, you know, I, I about maybe with after fees, I lost a little bit of money on this from what I paid. But it's better than not having selling it at all and losing everything. So hopefully the person likes the skillet. And we're going to go ahead and pack it up. And I'm going to show you how I pack fragile cast iron, okay? And all cast iron can be brittle, and you got to treat it with care. It's not indestructible. That's, uh, you know, a myth. People think cast iron is indestructible. That's not true. But at any rate, I'm going to use two boxes. And I'm going to go ahead and put this down here. Uh, this one here is a... Uh, it's a mailing box. It's a little bit larger than the medium flat rate box. This is barely big enough for the skillet with the pool noodles. And you can see here the outside dimensions are 12 and a half by 3.125 by 15.87. So that's this one. And then I put it into another box. And this one is slightly larger. It is a... Uh, Regional rate box B and this one has 14 by 4 by 3 by 16.25 But I can actually I can work it where there's double boxes and the extra box gives it extra cushioning and I'm able to do that and I've already factored that into the shipping and all of that uh, But the any extra cardboard and paper that you use around your skillet is going to absorb the shocks that it's going to get from shipping and I actually had somebody that messaged me on eBay and they wanted me to ship it in a flat rate box and a flat rate box is just not gonna fit flat rate box is smaller than this it's probably an inch smaller and just to show you um, 
I'll go ahead and put the skillet here. It's shorter, but with the pool noodles, you actually have the, the uh, a handle sticking out of, the, uh, the, of a medium flat rate box, so that's not going to work. And there's no way I would ever sacrifice the integrity of my shipping methods just because somebody wants it. And they, you know, I'm sorry it is what it is, but I've got to take most upteen care on shipping this thing. All right, I'll get off my soapbox now. So I'm going to go ahead and get this box prepared, and I'm going to show you how I actually package a skillet to get these in the boxes. I will be back. Okay, I'm back. And what you're looking at here is a pair of heavy-duty heavy duty scissors that I use. And I use it to cut thick cardboard. I use it to cut my shrink wrap, uh, which I use to do the skillet. And then I actually, it's so sharp that I take a pool noodle. I'm going to wrap this pool noodle around the skillet here to give it protection. So you're going to see me do that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and just do a line down the middle because we're going to fit the pool noodle around the rim of the skillet. And every skillet's different. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just make sure this is all the way through the one half of the side. Okay, and I'm over here with the skillet. And we're going to go ahead and wrap it around the edge, including the spouts. You want to try to get full coverage. And yeah, I managed to get it all. So what, what I'm going to go ahead and do is cut it then right there where I ended it. And sometimes I have to mark it with the pen because uh, I don't always get it that close. But I guess I got it that close today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut the pool noodle. And I'm going to go ahead and put it all around the skillet, like so, to give it protection against knocks if in case the box gets poked, something like that during shipment. This is going to protect the skillet to a much larger degree. See that? That's kind of how it looks. So now what I'm going to do so it stays intact, I'm going to take a piece of tape. I see it's going to come off unless I get tape. Okay, I'm going to have to put it here. It takes a little bit more care. I do charge a little bit for uh, shipping and handling because I take a little bit more care. It takes me a little bit more time, and, and my time is worth money. If you want a, a ca cast iron skillet packed correctly, uh, that's what you're going to get with my cast iron. So there it is. And I also take a picture of the piece with the packing slip to uh, ensure the condition of it exactly what it looks like when it's going out. You just never know if there's going to be an issue. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get this one in as close as possible. So I have to put the tape on there just to keep it so it doesn't move around on me. All right, so now i try to get it in there. All right, so we got that like that. Okay, and the next thing we do is we want to put a, 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 a pool noodle around the handle. So it's going to be about here or so. So we're going to go ahead and cut it again. I'm going to cut this piece because I can always use this piece somewhere else in packing the skillet. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put this in here that up. There we go. Okay, and then I've got this piece on to a degree that's wrapping the pool handle. And it has maybe about an inch 
between the edge of the uh, handle and the edge of the noodle and giving that protection. And what I'll do is just to make sure that it's protected, I'm going to clip a small piece of noodle and I put it in there like so. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some bubble wrap on here, and I'll be back when I'm ready to do that. Okay, got two sheets of uh, thin bubble wrap, and the reason why I do thin is because I've got to be able to fit it into the first box. So what we're going to do is we are going to take the bubble wrap and we're going to fold it over, and we're going to put it just like so to protect the bottom of the skillet like that and we're going to do the same thing with this side and I put the bubble side in I don't want to try to I don't want them to get punctured uh, by having them exposed to the outside all right and here we go and we're going to go ahead and tape that down and I probably need to redo my area here but it works most of the time I don't have a big uh, room just devoted to packing. Uh, just do it myself out of my uh, home here. Okay, so there we go. So we got that like that and what we're going to do is we're going to tape down we're going to tape down the corners and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, speed up the tape I'm, and so you can see me do this quickly back when we're ready for the next segment but you can watch this now okay now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put on the inside of the skillet some more pool pool, pool noodles so we'll go ahead and put this in we're going to go ahead and cut it Let's see, we're going to go ahead and cut it like so. I'm going to put this one in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and put my, sorry about the camera there. Uh, I'm going to put my uh, use and care and the packing slip right down here. So, uh, there we go. make sure it's nice down there that way the uh, when the customer opens the skillet that's one of the first things that they see and uh, the camera keeps moving around guys sorry about that I had to grab another pool noodle I ran out but this just is the best stuff to fill the skillet with and this one, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it in half. And we're going to pack it in and just fill the gaps. Just like so. And it looks like there's only one gap there. And we're pretty good that way. Okay, so we have all these little pieces that I save, and I can use them on another skillet. All right, now the next thing we need to do is we need to take shrink wrap and just wrap all this together so everything stays intact during shipping. All right, we got our shrink wrap here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is get it started and start wrapping it around. I'm going to hold the handle. I'm going to put the camera up so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, it's kind of hard to show on a video the way I do this, but this is the best way to pack a skillet. <laughs> Bar none, using the priority boxes. I've, you know, these have reached their destination, and if they're going far, uh, or if they are extra fragile like this one is, I'm going to double box it. I put it in a 12 by 3 by 15 box, put that box into a 16 by... 14 by 3 box priority. Priority boxes aren't that thick, but they're free from uh, USPS, so it helps save on the cost. All this other stuff I pay for, 
And uh, anyway, so that's pretty good that way. So we're going to go ahead and clip it off. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, we're going to go ahead and do it this way and get the, uh, the handle in with the skillet. And we're going to go ahead and get this all the way in. That way that little piece stays intact. And move it down. I don't know how much you guys can see. I know it's hard to see, so I apologize for that, but I just want to give you guys a visual of how I'm doing this. And I do this for every order, for every cast iron skillet that goes out. There we are. I'm going to go ahead, now the handle's wrapped, everything is kind of intact and, and together. There. So this is what you have, one, one unit to put into the box, fully, fully padded and protected, bubble wrap, shrink wrap, pool noodles, and then down below is the uh, care and use instructions for the individual, that is, or the buyer, and then the packing slip. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put in, now because I want to protect this part of the skillet, because it sticks out, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, on the side that is actually the front with the mailing label, the front of it, because it usually they're going to keep it that side up. Not necessarily, but it does help. So we're going to go ahead and put this in. And you can see here how this sticks out the end a little bit. And, you know, there's no way this wrap this way is going to fit in a flat rate box. Just don't even try it, guys. This is a number eight. It's not going to fit. If you have a six or a five, you might get away with it, but not a, not a number eight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill this with uh, newspaper. And we've started to wrap some up here. Newspaper is one of the best packing materials. It absor absorbs a lot of the knocks. Of shipping, you can even use it with glass, glassware. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it down here, and you guys can just watch me do it and see how I, uh, where I put it. And you can use these boxes if they're done correctly. Okay guys, I had to actually use extra tape because the handle sticks out a bit too far. I probably could have avoided that if the noodle were shorter that I put in the handle, but at this stage of the game, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. So this is what you have. Now I might have been able to ship this way, but I really don't feel that it's prudent. So I'm going to go ahead and tape the end of this end of the box and just make sure I get it down really, really good. Really good. And do another one. Lots of tape. Okay. So this is what I have here. And this is a 15 by 12 by 3 box. So now what we're going to do, remembering that this side has the bottom on it, and we want to put it on the side of the larger box facing upwards just to give it extra protection. We're going to go ahead and put it into the larger outside box. And you can see here there's very little room, but you want to make sure the box in the middle doesn't shift around too much. So we're going to put a little paper here. 
and here, and I will show you what it looks like when we're all finished. Okay, now we're all set to go. We put some newspaper in that side, just folded up a, uh, a, a piece of, um, the, in the long wise, and put it in here. It should just not move around, it's pretty secure. So we're gonna go ahead and tape up the ends. And we're going to go ahead and do it like this, do it like this, and we're just going to get it, it's a little thicker, I can't close it quite as far as I'd like to, but um, that's just the way it goes. Just got to make sure that these skillets are protected, and I'll be back when I'm done. Okay guys, I am back. So we have our box all done, and all, I'm pretty much ready to uh, just measure the outside dimensions. I have my fragile sticker on. I, I get, I buy a roll real cheap on eBay, a fragile handle with care stickers. It saves me a ton of time. I just put one on each side of the box and everywhere it is, it's taped so it can't come off. And you know, I don't know if it helps or not, but it just, it says handle with care. And we have one on each side of the box here. So all the sides, six sides of the box have a fragile sticker. Then we're just gonna go do the shipping label and we're gonna go ahead and get this in the mail. So we have two boxes, lots of cardboard, pool noodles, shrink wrap, bubble wrap, and newspaper to give this skillet as much protection as possible during shipment. You need that, especially, you know, when you're shipping cast iron, uh, even even glass. Of course, glass would go in a different type box depending on what you have. But newspaper absorbs the any paper type product absorbs the blows. The foam just protects all the edges really really well, and it also keeps it from knocking around in the box. You don't want your pieces knocking around in the box. That's you're opening yourself up for damage and an unhappy buyer. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is measure. It says the outside dimensions are actually a little larger than what I came up with. Uh, here, it's 16, 16 inches by, I don't know if you can see it, I'll do it over here where you can see it, 14.4, which is correct, so I go to 14.25, and then of course we have the side here, and I'm going to go to 3.25 because it does bow out a little bit, better safe than sorry. So anyway, that's all you got to uh, shipping, and then of course you want to weigh it. And it is, let's see if I can get down there where you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. it says five pounds, 1.8 ounces. So it doesn't matter if it's five pounds, 0.5 ounces, or five pounds, 15 ounces. It's going to go into the six pound category. And that's why I, when I ship this stuff, I always weigh it in all the packaging before I even list the item. So I'm never caught behind the eight ball. Okay, guys, keep it safe. Thanks for watching. Uh, give me a thumb up if you like videos like this. And um, that helps videos like this make it hot and, and higher in the um, eBay uh, search, or not eBay, YouTube search engines. And uh, leave a comment or question below. Thanks for watching, guys, and go make it a great day.